Hello there, my name is Katie and I'm the Education Coordinator for the Howard Steamboat Museum. I'm also a docent here so I can tell the stories of this amazing mansion built beginning in 1890 and finished in 1894 by the Howard family, Edmonds and Laura Howard, wanted a show place. They wanted a house that represented the status they had achieved in the community by building steamboats. Their shipyard was across the street, so a very easy commute to go to work. Everything in this house was intended to show off the skill of the steamboat craftsmen that were part of the shipyard carpentry crew. And that's why in this house we have things that are not like any other Victorian house in this area and not like any other historic house in the country. This one was built Richardsonian Romanesque on the outside and Edmonds and Laura Howard on the inside. This is such an amazing house primarily because the interior was built by a steam of craftsmen and they brought in all kinds of skills needed to construct the house. Keeping in mind, no power tools, no machinery, no computers that could do this work. Everything in this house was done by human hands using simple hand tools. A lot of that is reflected in the types of architecture that are part of the interior of the house, including in this room we're sitting in right now. This is the parlor. They also called it the music room. And the architecture of this room really does reflect the culture of fancy floating palace steamboats of the 1890s. It's considered a Moorish pattern, very popular in its time, something Laura loved, and would be found commonly on river steamboats that expected a lot of money for the tickets that they sold to passengers. Now also in this room we have the example of the skill of the carpenters and the wood carvers that were part of the shipyard crew as well. Everything you see that's carved was carved by hand. They had hired a wood carver from Germany, Ernst Hoffmann, to do wood carving on boats, so they simply hired him to do wood carving inside the house. All of the 13 wooden mantelpieces in this house were carved by Ernst Hoffmann. And because of Laura's wishes, None of them are the same. This house has seen a lot of change in its almost 130 years of existence. And two of the major events that made an impact on this house's history were the 1937 flood and a fire that occurred here in 1971. Edmonds Howard, when he built this house, researched the river. Not if it would flood, how high it had flooded. And he built the house up higher than any flood that had been recorded. He even added two additional feet during construction to make sure that this house would never have water inside the house. He never expected to see it, and he never did. He and Laura both died in 1919. No one could have predicted the height of the 1937 flood when it came to over 57 feet above normal. And in this house, there was seven feet of water. Of course, these are boat people. They already knew to open the doors of the house so that the river in its flooded condition would not just simply rip them off. And that allowed them to row their small boats in and out of the house, go to the shipyard, work around, come to the house, row through the entire house, check things out, and see if anything was of concern during the flood. And then they would tie their small boats up to the handrails of the staircase and simply go upstairs to lift during that period of time. Two floors of this house were completely dry. There were fireplace, fireplaces in many of the rooms that allowed them to have heat in January and February of 1937. And they had anticipated the need, so they took a small cook stove up to the bathroom on the second floor. So during this period of time when it would otherwise have been quite a disaster, they were fairly comfortable. They had sleeping space, they were warm, and they could cook food. So during the 1937 flood, the Howard family housed people as they could, shuttled people, moved supplies around, did anything they could to help, because that's simply who the Howards were. Now the second disaster that affected the house's history in 1971 occurred because of an explosion of the boiler system that was the heating system for this house. The boiler system was just like the boiler system on steamboats at that time. 
If a boiler runs out of water or malfunctions, there's going to be an explosion, and that's what happened here. Those boilers were underneath the kitchen of the house, so it got the worst of the disaster. And then the stairwells acted like flues that sucked the fire up. So things that weren't close to the stairwells actually didn't suffer much of the fire at all. The stairwells and the things close by the stairwells had the most damage. The board of directors decided to rebuild the house because so much of it was not owned. And thank goodness they did because this house still stands as a testament to the craftsmanship and the skill of the shipyard of carpenters from the Howard Shipyard in the 1890s. A wonderful part of this construction and a wonderful part of this house itself is all the various forms of art that make up this beautiful 22 room, 15,000 square foot mansion. I'm very pleased to say that that art continues on all three floors of this mansion. For example, the piano that is in this particular room, this is called the parlor, it was also called the music room because of the piano and other instruments that were played in this room. The piano is one that was purchased for this house by the Howard family. It's a Steinway. It's absolutely beautifully restored on the outside, but it was a victim of the 1937 flood. It was too heavy to move upstairs, and unfortunately during the flood, it, it came completely unglued. And after the water receded, they discovered all the pieces of the piano lying in the mud left behind. Thank goodness they saved all those pieces because we were eventually able to restore the piano just as it looked when it was first purchased in 1893. Another form of art in this house is the chandeliers that were purchased at the Columbian Exposition in 1893. Again, Howards were furnishing their brand new house at that time. And several of the, men, of the chandeliers on the first floor were from that exposition. The one in the parlor is of exceptional beauty and exceptional construction, especially for that period of time in the 1890s. The mantelpieces throughout this house, again carved by Ernst Hoffman, are all tremendous examples of what people can do with simple tools, chisels, mallets, a good eye, and a lot of experience. And they are all over the house as well. The last residents of this house were Jim and Loretta Howard. Jim was the grandson of James Howard, who started the shipyard across the street in 1834. And by the time Jim and Loretta were living here and running the shipyard together for the last 15 years of Howard ownership, Jim already had the, the idea that this house should become a museum. Now he died before he could make that happen. But in 1956, after he passed away, Loretta began the process of getting the city to permit her to open the house as a museum. And even though it took two years, she persevered until she could honestly say the Howard Steamboat Museum opened in 1958. Now this was still her home. She made a little apartment for herself on the third floor and then she would come down in the morning and open the door for the visitors and was the first tour guide. Imagine the stories that she could tell about the house and the family and the shipyard. Well, this being her home, she was actually showing off her home's possessions, her household possessions, things that the Howards had collected for decades of time. 1969 rolled around and Loretta needed to move to a one floor living space. So since 1969, no one has lived in this house, but it has carried on as the Howard Steamboat Museum because of the effort, efforts of Loretta Howard and Jim's dream of making this house a museum.